Valorant is finally here, ladies and gentlemen, and with the release comes a whole bunch of potential teammate synergies. Today, I aim to rank all of Clorand's teammates from worst to best with reasonings. My name is Juice, and let's get into it. But man, Clorand is really fine, and I'd be lying if I was saying I wasn't ready to welcome her with open arms. But if I want Clorand, I'm gonna need Genesis Crystals. Where can I go to afford these better? That's where Loot Bar comes in. Loot Bar is a fantastic service which cuts the cost of Prima Gems and Stellar Jades compared to the original prices as shown in-game. With 5% off for new users, it saves up to 20% compared to the official channel. Loot Bar is very safe and has received a lot of good reviews. Is this legit? How do they do this? Well, allow me to demonstrate. You need no login information whatsoever, just your UID. Go ahead and input that after choosing your desired package. Pay safely and then voila. Take a look at this price comparison between the official cost and the loot bar cost. This is perfectly legitimate as the site uses a VPN to provide you for cheaper Prima Gems and official top up methods are used. Try out loot bar today to save on all your gotcha needs. So to start off with, here is Yao Yao who I believe to be a little cope. This is because Cloran is an on-field Zora and Yao Yao does not bode well with this. And her off-field UA Gways have awful dendro application. This causes her to be a copium pick because to get the majority of Yao Yao's value you need to on-field her. Then for Kale, her dendro application itself is strong in terms of dendro units, but the range is way too small to justify using her. She's free to play, but dendro main character is a lot better, and she has zero of her utilities, so unfortunately I consider her to be a little cope. Kuka Shinobu is a healer, and Cloran heals herself, so her utilities aren't really needed alongside her. She's a big damage loss over just using a sub DPS, and Kuka Shinobu is generally better used in Hyper Bloom teams. I'm going to use Venti to represent all of the other Viridescent Venerer options that don't have special benefits for Chloran. They're all fine because they will apply Viridescent Venerer and work, but Chloran herself receives no special benefit. Then we move on to the next tier, where I'm going to talk about Lynette. I'd say she is pretty good in Aggravate, but she has no grouping, which is pretty sad. Outside of that, she doesn't really have much else use, which is why I simply consider her to be workable. I'd say her main benefit to Chlorant is the fact that she's free to play, and she is decent in Aggravate in particular. Then we move on to Dendro main character. You use her or him solely as a free to play Dendro applicator. The Dendro application is good, but it is stuck in one place of the Abyss floor, sadly, and she has no other qualities outside of this application. Then we move on to Shang Ling. The thing is, you would use Shang Ling if you're trying to play Overload. Otherwise, Shang Ling's own damage in these teams kind of falls off because she wants Bennett to be alongside her to buff her own attack. But the thing is, you're always going to be playing Clorand with two Electros, two Pyros in an Overload team, and that other Pyro will almost always be Chevrous, if not always, because she is what makes Overload work. So unfortunately, this leads her to just being okay, and as the tier says, workable. Then we get on to Yaimiko. So the thing with Yaimiko is that she is strong, but she takes Fischl's slot, which is problematic, and her field time is long. The thing is, you would prefer to use Yai in her own aggravate team as opposed to pairing her with Clorand, but I suppose if you want to run double waifu, then go for it. Then we move on to the good tier. I'm gonna put Farina up here. So, she's pretty good with her damage buffing, though Coriander doesn't really like Quick Blooms much, and the HP loss can be troublesome. But the damage bonus is valuable within Aggravate teams, and Clorind gets that from Farina in spades. When it comes to Yelan, she has more single target concentrated Hydro damage, and her sub DPS is very high, not to mention that her damage buffing is ramping based on her A4 and not based on HP loss mechanics, though she isn't any higher on the list because, once again, Cloran does not really enjoy dealing in Quick Blooms. Then we get on to Kirara. So she's a good free to play Dendro option, and she's a four star, and her defensive capabilities are not half bad. So because of that, I would say that she's a good use of Clorand. After all, Kirara has proven herself to be quite effective within aggravate teams in general. Then we get into Chevrus. So I consider her to be a good overload unit in general. Not only that, but she has amazing buffing for Pyro and Electro within said teams. Her A4 and C6 also have no team-based restrictions, so feel free to play around with that if you're interested. Then we move on to the Splendid tier. This is where the supports are really starting to pack a bunch. 
Yun Jin. So she's really good for Clorant Hyper Carry. And a fun fact, she's one of the few characters that uses all of Yun Jin's buffing stacks. Not to mention the attack speed that Yun Jin gives at C6 allows Clorant to pull off one more normal attack in her regular combo rotations. High investment Clorants will enjoy her as she makes her Coriander no longer official only bot. Finally, this is a new use case for Yun Jin. She's not going to be stronger than Fischl, however, 99% of the time. Then we move on to Fischl. I would say she's best in slot and aggravate teams. Her EM share is amazing, and it's amazing that she can also act as her Veerdes and Venera Swirler. Her main issue is that it can be hard for her to swirl if Nahida's in the team, because Nahida eats Electro Application for breakfast. Also, she can be a little bit difficult to use for players that are less experienced. Outside of that, although I'm usually quite unkind to Sucrose, I find that within Aggravate, she really shines. So yeah, good teammate in my opinion. Then we move on to the wonderful Baiju. So he's an amazing defensive option within these teams. He has buffing, he has healing, and he has shielding. All in one. Tons of rule consolidation while still fitting nicely within Aggravate. And that buffing I spoke about earlier is Dendro based. And he doesn't apply Dendro to the point where swirling becomes nigh impossible. And this is why I consider Baiju the ultimate comfort pick. Then we move on to the electrifying tier. These are the characters that are really going to push your Clorion to the next level. First things first, Kazuha. He is amazing. He loves providing Clorion with damage bonus, and what do you know? Clorion loves damage bonus herself. He's the best four-piece Viridescent Venerar holder within Clorox teams, and as you know, using Kazuha comes with all of his other benefits, such as grouping and whatnot. Then we move on to Nihita, who is the best Dendro applicator for Clorand. No questions asked. High EM based buffing, tons of field time flexibility, and a great unit overall, not to mention how good she is in multi-wave. She is absolutely worth using with your Clorand if you do not already have her in use. And then the cream of the crop, Fischl. The thing is, Clorand decided to be an aggravate carry, so naturally that makes Fischl her most electrifying option. Fischl is the god tier support. She has an amazing A4, which Clorand can constantly trigger with her fast-paced electro-normal attacks, and she is very useful for energy gain, which considering how Clorand's burst does nuclear damage and also gives her plenty of bond of life, that's a pretty great mechanic. She can reposition, and she's best in slot for aggravate on the whole. Clorand can really abuse Thundering Fury with this show, and she has the best team DPS of Clorand overall. This is just a snippet into the wonderful reasons as to why you should be applying these supports within your Cloran teams. I'll be discussing this all in more detail soon when my guide comes out eventually, hopefully on Friday. See you all then. Hopefully this guide was able to hold you over until I deliver my fully fledged Cloran guide. This has been Juice, signing out. And another tip, know that Chevrolet can immediately become best in slot with Cloran if you're trying to form the double cop duo.